Hey guys, it's Denise from TheMahead.com. Thanks for coming back for part two of the ballerina pattern. If you haven't seen part one, visit the website at lumahat.com forward slash ballerinas and stay till the end so I can give you more information on how to make these cuties. All right, and you're also going to need to see the video for the ballerina bun as well as how to embroider Charles's hair. Let's begin first by defining the hands and the arms. To do this, you're gonna get a small scrap of yarn. Here I use black for Charles to define his sleeve from his hand. And for Cami, I'm gonna use the same skin color and count three um, rows. And then I'm gonna take the two ends and I'm going to do a simple knot. And you can tighten it just enough to give you shape on the hands. So get it situated correctly. And then you can go ahead and do a second knot. And this is the one I'm using. Folks have different knots. You should use the one that you feel is going to be the safest. And in fact, you could go ahead and even add a little bit of glue before you do the knot. And then um, once you feel secure, if you want, you can cut the excess yarn or you can feed it through the arm with a crochet hook. This works for me. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. So now just remember to do the second arm. For the eyes and mouth, I recommend that you start by placing some pins where you think you want them. And it's a good idea to make sure that they line up, especially the eyes, and that your nose is in the middle of the face. And count your rows between eyes, and it just makes it look more symmetrical. And then just get some embroidery thread and mine is a six ply so I'm going to separate it so that I just have three um, so it's just three ply. I find that when I use more than that it's just kind of thick and I don't get the detail the way I want it. The other thing you have to do is get seed beads if that's what you're using that's what I used you can use safety eyes or even just thread if you're going to use the seed beads make sure that the needle that you got is the right one for that bead and that the bead will feed through trust me I've been there where it doesn't work and it's very frustrating thread the needle that you're going to use with your three ply thread and put a knot on the end you can also use a slip knot if that makes it more comfortable and come from behind what you want to make sure is that the yarn I'm sorry that the thread is not going to just feed through and then just uh, bring it to where you had your pin marked you can remove the pin and now place your seed bead through the yarn and onto the little spot where you had the bead to mark the eye and bring it down and you can g take that needle and thread it through and you'll see the eye kind of like dig into the little hole uh, in between your stitch and that's what you want it to do and then bring the needle back out again and you're going to feed that thread uh, through the eye because you you want to have it secure and you want to do this a few times so feed it through and yeah you got to get it situated exactly where you want it and then you're going to feed it a couple of times this is the other reason why it's you use three ply instead of two instead of six because after a while you can't even feed the thread through the seed bead um, and then just you're just coming from the back to the front and from the front back again to the back of the head and don't worry that's not going to show once you have your hair and then bring the needle over to the other side and now you're going to do the other little eye just like you did this one feed it through go to the back get it situated make sure that before you start 
uh, sewing the eye that you have it in place exactly the way you want it and keep going back you need to do this at least three times and every so often go back and make sure it's situated and then you can make a knot again in the back and if this happens to you get your crochet hook and make a knot like that and I'm showing you that because it happens to me all the time alright your eyes are on time to move to the nose make sure that it matches your doll feed it through where your safety pin was and you're going to need to secure this yarn I didn't do this last time with my other doll so I want to make sure that happens here you're gonna put that knot vertical instead of horizontally and then you're going to come back and you need to give it another round so feed well get it situated correctly first and then take your yarn and you're gonna feed it through again kinda to hide that little knot cause it's not very cute so you're gonna put like another layer of the yarn over the little knot one to hide it and two cause it looks better and then just feed the needle upward because you want it hidden you can do a knot here if you want to or not and you need to of course get your little nose to shape the way you want it and make sure that your stitches are not too tight because your stuffing is going to show so you want to pull it out till it gets the way exactly the way you want it and then you can cut your excess yarn and of course like I said you can always make a little knot on the top before you cut off that yarn and now your nose is done how about that now let's do the last repositioning of the eyes exactly where we want them and we're going to now move on to the eyelashes. Get your needle and thread again and just like before we're going to go ahead and do a knot to make sure that it doesn't come through and come from the back to the front just where you want that first lash to be I'm just gonna give the doll three little lashes so this will be my first one and then I come through believe it or not and I do the third one next only because I want the middle one to be between the two so I make sure everything is the way I like it and if you didn't like where your needle landed you can always just take it off and pull everything back out. How about that? No big deal. Nothing to see. You can just move on and do it all over again. I'm just going to do that third lash to the side. And then that lets me know exactly where the middle is going to be. And that's when I put in the third lash. So my three eyelashes are where the, I want them and I move on to my other eye. And doing this, going from one eye to the other, keeps your uh, thread nice and secure. And go ahead and do those three. You could do more if you want to. I don't like to overdo it and that works for me. Push it back to the back and do a little knot. Take it off and you're done now we're ready to move on to the hair you're going to get thread that matches the skin tone and thread for the hair the one that matches the skin tone you're going to unravel because you just need two strands of the four and put it feed it through your needle and you're going to find the midline right here which is where you're going to start your first row for your hair and you're going to fold it in half the length that you want. Get your thread. I'm going to put a knot on mine. And then take the pins off. And in between one of the stitches, you're going to sew the little bit of hair that you folded in half. Go back and feed the needle through it again. And so you're kind of creating like a loop at the top of your hair. Take the next pin off and 
we're going to do the same thing again on the top but first let's finish this bottom part so keep getting your little bits of hair you fold them in half and then you're like sewing them on so in my case um, the yarn that I chose is kind of a thick type of uh, yarn and so I'm going to actually match up with the rows of um, stitches and I'm just going to keep going like I said midline on uh, the back of her head and I've used these pins to help me stay in line it's not like a major it doesn't have to be exact just close enough I feel a little better by having the pins there um, I always like to have a guide when I'm doing these things so the pins help me and the lines help me now I've done the bottom I put some pins on the top and Cammie's hair is um, split in the middle so I'm bringing my needle up to the middle of her head in order to place the first of the top layer of hair and I'm matching up right in the middle where her nose is and I'm going to then um, start with that front part so I fold it it is uh, twice the length that I want it so I can fold it in half and now again I'm going to start to sew by creating like a loop that holds the hair in place and just keep adding strands of hair. You can add more if you see some little bald spots and you can always just add and add or you can get a glue gun and add a couple of spots of glue along the hair line and then just place the hair in where you want it and you don't have to add more hair. And she's ready for a haircut. Next, it's time to knit the skirt and we're gonna be using the Scarlet Flower pattern. So get your loom and among those stitch markers is this kind which opens and closes. It's not vital. I like it because I'm gonna be moving it around. So the fact that it opens like this makes it really cool because I don't have to dismount in order to use it. Now let's secure the yarn and we're going to do a drawstring cast on so we're going to zigzag through every other peg and once we've done that and we're back at the front we're going to place the yarn lightly over a couple of pegs at, the at a time and knit off every uh, peg with two loops. Take the one on the bottom over the top and knit off and then and just continue around the entire loom until you're back at the front and we're going to skip the first one and go to peg two and knit that one off and we're going to do a row of u-wrap knit stitch and this is where after this row it's a bit different from the scarlet flower in that we will not be doing any more rows of knits now here's peg one and you're just going to do another basic knit and we're going to start the e-wrap chain um, the e-wrap chain sorry on this peg right here which is peg two so normally you would take your hook and knit off but instead of using the hook we're going to use what's called a locking stitch marker and you will see why so here's knit one we need to do six e wrap so that was one, here is two. You're gonna come back and do your next one. This is going to be three. And remember I said we're doing six for this row. This is your first row. So you're going to do six E-wrap chain stitches. And once you've done your six 
you're going to take um, that last loop that you did and take it off the peg and move it over to the peg next to that one. In this particular case, it will be peg number three. Tighten because you will need to knit that off. Go back and get the stitch marker that has your stitch one and remount it onto that peg. And this is why this stitch marker is way better than using your hook. Now you tighten your yarn and you're gonna leave those two there and move on to the next one. And we're gonna repeat the same process. So you're going to do your first E-wrap of your six with your stitch marker in it. Come back and start numbering. So you did one, here you're gonna do two remember you need six and this is row one of three rows so here you're going to do six for row two you're going to do eight and for row three you're going to do nine so here we're doing six e-wrap chains take the loop off move it over to the next peg and you're going to Leave, get that one that's empty. So you put your loop on, tighten it, and then go get your stitch marker that has your stitch number one and remount it onto that empty peg. And now just continue that same procedure. Here is where you started, and you've done those. Now you're going to do the rest of the loom. When you reach the second to last, you're going to change things here. So now you want to move your stitch marker over because this is where you're going to start your E-wrap chain stitch. And so we're going to do just a basic knit on the last stitch. And then we're going to start the E-wrap chain stitch, which is basically just, in this case, because it's row two, it's eight E-wrap uh, stitches on the same peg. So you're going to do eight and then you're going to finish the same procedure but this time before you start on the next point of the process what we're going to want to do is to go ahead and knit off all of the ones that have two loops. So that has two loops, that one, and keep going around the whole loom until you've done that and you're back over here again. Remove that loop, move it over, tighten, and bring that first stitch back on. You're going to repeat it. You're going to go around the loom and do the same thing. When you get back here, then you're going to move this over because now you want to start the next E-wrap there. And you guys know the procedure. It's going to look like this, but on the other side. So here's a little cheat sheet to help you with the rows. When you finish row three, we're just gonna go ahead and do the cast off. So wrap your working yarn around your loom, get your scissors cut, and now we're going to feed that working yarn through every one of the pegs that has a loop, which is all 24 of them. So from the bottom, scoop up your uh, yarn all the way to you get back to the first one and I go back to the first one that I did you don't have to and for some people this is problematic but for me I like to do that again and then take all the loops off my peg once I'm completely done and my yarn is free now this section can be a little frustrating uh, first know the top from the bottom so to know your cast on from your cast off I suggest putting a little knot right here on one of them so you can tell one from the other you're going to put the cast on as the top of the skirt and the cast off as the bottom of the skirt because the loops of course are longer because you started by doing six and then stopped with your last row of doing eight. Then you want to close this. So you're going to pull on your loops and do this slowly. This can get frustrating and you know, you don't want to get frustrated. 
just those really big loops you're going to keep pulling you want to shrink this down to the size of the waist of the doll and not only are you shrinking it um, you know from being as wide you also need to work on these loops um, that make up the e-wrap chain so make sure that they're in the right side which is the front side of your skirt some of them will because of the nature of the stitch push to the back of the skirt so with your hands you want to bring these loops back to the front and you want them to have good definition so you want to stretch them and at the same time you want to continue to close in the little skirt so you have the cast on and the cast off stitches that you need to tighten and you see that it starts to take shape and it starts to look like a little skirt and you just want your little loops stretched out and looking as good as you can make them and this bottom one can be feisty sometimes which is what I was saying about putting your yarn through um, peg number one a second time it does sometimes cause like a little knot that you have to work out of your um, of that last row of that working yarn so once it does just go and focus on that yarn and pull on it back and forth until you can release that knot if you don't do that um, you're gonna kinda have to sew it closed a little that's why I kinda prefer to fight with this knot at the end than to have to sew it later so it will come off if you just pull on your um, that cast on working yarn and it keeps shaping your skirt once you've done that you can put the little skirt on the doll and pull that working yarn until it's situated exactly where you want it and the cast off uh, yarn you're going to then go ahead and weave it in so get a crochet hook and put it through your loom and pull that out and make a knot and if you're still not quite too comfy with just that one knot you can put your crochet hook through and make a second knot you guys know how I am about my two knots I prefer two over one it's just me but it's not necessary one knot is going to be enough and then you can take your scissors and cut it off and save your scrap yarn because you're going to need it to detail more get the cast off and you're going to then sew the little skirt in place if you want to continue to take it off and put it on you can also choose to put a button and that will work to keep it secure but if you're going to sew keep sewing all the way around um, to the back it's time to add the shoe straps to your ballerina so uh, thread your needle with some of the matching yarn for the shoes and you're gonna feed it from the back you want these uh, looks like two strands to turn into one and you're gonna bring them to the front cross them over take them to the back and cross them over in the back and then you need to bring them back to the front and I'm going to tie my straps in the front you get to uh, bring them take them back to the back and tie them I like I like it in the front and of course I'm going to make two knots and just like before if you like you can put some glue on them here or not and uh, in my case once I do my two knots I'm going to cut the straps to the size that I want and that was foot number one so of course we need to do the second one and there you go time to move on next we're going to add straps to her little dress and we're going to put them here and here and we're going to do it using some of the yarn so first make uh, wrap her her shoulders and come to the back and you're going to cross over make sure you have enough length on both of your uh, straps of yarn 
and come back to the front and again you're going to like wrap her shoulder and bring the yarn to the back again because you're going to make a knot on the back side like this and again I'm doing a basic knot you can make that a little different if you'd like and again here's another spot where you can add some glue if that makes it easier I'm going to do um, those two knots that I constantly do and if you want you can um, feed it feed that uh, leftover excess yarn through the doll and this gives you uh, a secure weaved in end you can do that with both of them and then just get your uh, scissors after you've put in the other end and you can cut off any excess yarn like here so pull on it a little bit and then cut and the excess yarn will hide inside the doll all right let's move on Cammie loves makeup even as a doll so I'm going to add blush to her cheeks and I do this with just some um, leftover samples that I had and an eyeshadow applicator I basically put a little bit on the applicator and then just rub it onto the cheeks you could put a little or a lot whatever makes you happy alright guys she is done and now let's move on to our three let me start off by letting you know that the yarn I used for Cami's hair is no longer available, but any novelty yarn will work fine in your choice of color. In fact, homespun would work great. Now, um, this little detail here of the ribbon on the doll, I used it to hide with my glue gun the stems of the leaves that I used as wings and it hides it nicely. I also used um, my glue gun after I sewed the tutu to kind of keep it more secure and you can do that if you like. Um, as far as this little headband here, it's just beads, so is this. And here, these are sewn on. The other one, headband, I glued on, uh, but you could sew or glue any of the accessories these I liked and here to use my yarn thread to put into place and here they have little dots that were done with some white paint I just think it makes the little eyes look nice and so I put those little white dots her hair is just regular red heart yarn and so is his as far as his little uh, beads this is some of the embroidery thread, not the yarn thread, and the same beads. His are gold. Uh, I used yarn thread for the rest of his accessories. And um, you could use either one. For Kelly, this is also more beads on a thread. And her earrings were actually glued on but you can sew them on if you feel more comfortable that way her necklace is beads on a string and these I sewed on so she also has a ribbon that I glued on and her uh, leaves which are her wings were also glued on so that's these three and all of them are the basic pattern all I did was add accessories you can decide what you want to change on your doll um, what kind of hairdo what kind of beads or no beads um, you know just make the doll your own as you can see these three dolls even though they are the same basic pattern by the way he has a ribbon here as well to clean up his edge uh, but they are basically all the same pattern his little ears were done just like his little nose uh, and all of them are the same they have different hair 
and a few different accessories here and there. Don't miss the next pattern. Subscribe and come back and loom with me. Alright guys, I hope you liked the video. Leave me your comments and your questions. 